control of this world. Yes. Nobody on that world except one man and he alone. And what he said goes. Yes. Sometimes we try to bring God down. We don't value that man named God. We don't value him. We bring him down and so we know of nothing. But this morning I'm here to say to you, he's almighty. And he will always remain almighty. I'm taking Samson as an example. We all know about Samson and Delilah. We all know the story. But this morning I'm going to base, touch some base. People of God, do not equally yoke with unbelief. And many times we yoke ourselves with the unbeliever. Samson knew he was a anointing man of God. Samson knew his position in the Lord and he did what was right in the eyes of God. And will be a father unto you and he will be a son and daughter, saith the Lord Almighty, separate and equally you. Samson was a man anointed by God, yet still he was playing with the worldly pleasure. Many times we call ourselves anointing, powerful man of God. Yes, God has those people. And yet still, we are playing with the worldly pleasure. But today I'm here to say to you all, stop playing with the worldly pleasure. Do not equally yoke. Samson's behavior was so classic that everyone must learn something from him. When you study the book of Judges, 14 down to 60, you will see what Samson, how he lived his life, and what become of him at the end. Example, that was the state of Samson. He had a religious separation side of him, which was shown by the fact that he never had to cut his hair. Example, yet still, he was unequal yoke to the things of this world. They are born again children, child of God, who separate themselves from the world, but yet still they live in sin. We call ourselves born again child of God. We repent, we baptize, and yet still we are out there in the world, in this sinful world, equally up with unbelievers. Today I'm here to say to you, the time has come when we need to listen to what God has to say to us. And do not be rebel and disobedient. Samson was also practicing another kind of quiet spirit. How can you be a born again child of God, living for God, and yet still you are out there doing all evil kind of things? Church, it don't pay. For a people, somebody who call themselves born again child of God. And let me explain something. It's very important. When I know, for sure, when I went down underneath that water the day I get baptized, when I come out from that water, I was never the same person. Amen. That's the Lord. And people say, Hallelujah. when they go down underneath that water, my pastor said, it will take time. It will take time? No way. It's not true. When I went down underneath that water and I come out, I was a different person. Because all my sins was washed away. I was a different person. Because the anointing of God came upon me when I was underneath that water. And this is who I am today. It was the blood that cleansed me. It was the blood that washed me. It was the blood that made me who I am today. Many times people we link ourselves with the things of this world. Many times we have a mission. Many times God call us as a pastor, elder, or whatever minister we have to do for the Lord. And yet still we go around, we play around. We do all different kind of things. And when things get rough, 
then we blame God. But I'm here to say to you, stop blaming God, but blame yourself. Because you are the cause of your problem. Because many times, we have been so rebellious and disobedient. And this is what Samson had to pay for. He's disobedient and rebellious. We call ourselves powerful man of God. Then again, when you look at us, you say, is this a man of God for true? Is that sister truly who she called herself to be? People, let us stop. Stop for a minute and let us examine ourselves. Search ourselves and see where we are going wrong. Search ourselves and say, Lord, here I am today. I have gone astray, but please pull, and pull me back. Yes. Sin bring you further than you want to go. Yes. Satan take you further than you want to go. Yes. Sin is not easy. When someone is out there fornicating, doing all different kind of things, and you think that you will get out of it, no. You have to pay for it. You will go through so much pain that you won't even believe. The kind of pain that we go through. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if God call you, or whatever call gift you have on you, say goodbye to the things of this world. Say goodbye to fornication. Say goodbye to adultery. Say goodbye to all things that is not of God. And live the life that God wants you to. Samson's life was one that separates, and yet he was entangled in the world. Many times, there are places that we're not supposed to go. People have got to make people understand something. People say, oh, Christians cannot enjoy themselves. Who says so? Christians can enjoy themselves more than the people out there in the world. You come to church on a Sunday morning, some singing. What happened? You cannot enjoy yourself? You cannot shake yourself? David danced. I don't know what kind of dance he danced. But that day when David danced, his fans fall on him. Why he danced? He was in the spirit when he danced. He moved in a different direction because he was a anointed man of God. When the spirit of the Lord come upon me, I'm going to dance like David danced. But this 
morning, there can be a difference. If you only trust God, avail yourself in God. Let God use you. Let God change your life for you. There's nothing God cannot do. Nothing is too hard for God to do. Yes. If he did it for other people, he can do it for me. Amen. If he did it for somebody else who was out there in the world, and God bring that person back to him, there's nothing my God cannot do. Amen. There's an example in the Bible that we can follow. There are things in the Bible that God gives us as an example that we should follow as believers, born again child of God. But yet still, people of God, we fail to take it serious. We've been disobedient and rebellious against the word of God, but we don't rebel against the devil. Some of us, when we come to church, we are so holy. Holy, holy, holy. I'm not saying people is not holy. I'm not saying that. But some of us, we pretend to be holy. And when we leave the church, come and see us. Hear the words that are coming out of our tongue. Hear the way we conduct our conversation with the unbelievers. They are the one, people of God. They are the one that we're giving them the feet. That we're giving them the work to tie us to our neck. Because the way that talk, what we do, the way we conduct ourselves, the dressing we put, the kind of things we say, they wonder, is she a true Christian? Today you can't even recognize the born again and the unseen. On, but on the other hand, you are playing with the things of this world. Yes, you are just like Samson. People of God, we are playing with God. Samson also played with God. He was wearing his long hair, and he not supposed to cut that hair. From the time Samson was in mother womb, God told his mother what he wanted of Samson. Many times, God called us to do something that is so important. Every one of us have a gift. But sometimes we throw our gift. Don't be jealous of anything somebody has. God gave you a gift. Amen. Every single one of us have a talent. Where is your talent? Where is your gift? You hide it, and I'm jealous of the brother's gift. I'm jealous of because the brother is preaching. I'm jealous of because of the sister is, is something. No. Use your gift. Use your talent. Bring glory and honor to the Most High God. Yeah. And stop digging and hiding the gift that God gave you. Yeah. Each one of us has a calling upon our life. If you don't know your calling, ask God. He said, if you lack wisdom, ask. Whatever you lack of, ask God and He will direct you. Yes. Man will not direct you because many times when man gives you something, they take it back, they fight you down. But when God bless you, He bless you forever. Amen. Only if you want to throw it out, He will throw it out. But when God bless you, He bless you forever. Amen. No one can take it out. He alone that can take it out. And I'm saying to you, church, whatever gift that God bless you, talent, make use of it. Because one day, you won't be there to make use of it. That is why the songwriter said, don't leave unfinished tax. Whatever tax you have to do for the Lord, do it. Yes. I sit, I sat down with the gift that I have. Not even my mother that know who I am. Only two of my sisters that have an idea. <coughs> Nobody don't know. I don't even know who I am. But every day I'm praying to God that one day she will know who I am. Out of those 15 children my mother have, I am the different, I'm different from all of them. Amen. And I thank God. Amen. I thank God for that gift. I didn't know I had a calling on my life. Hallelujah. I didn't know I had a calling on my life and I had that calling from a very long time ago. I used to dream and sit down there and see vision and when I tell you I sit down there and I see the person at their home and I call and I said, look, I see you have such a close to this and they said, Lucia, you are by my home. I'm saying, no. And I thank God that day when God revealed who I am. And I said, thank you, Lord. And I can never regret. I did something in life 
When God gave me a message for somebody, I'm saying it this morning. And the person was treating me a kind of way every time I bring that message for that person. Until I said, Lord, don't give me no message just for nobody. I was just like Moses when Moses was going to Pharaoh. And he was saying, Lord, who am I? Will they listen to me? What will they say? And that was what I was saying. Until one day, the Lord said to me, stop doing those things. And that message come from that. And I was like, oh my goodness. Is that true? He said to me, yes. And I'm saying, brothers and sisters, until God called me back 2008, used a woman all the way from stream of power in Cassidy's, and came and called me back and said, I need you. The work that I started in you, I haven't finished. Yeah. Come back, I yeah. Yeah. And now, no matter what message God gave me for you, I bring it for you. Take it or leave it, my sister. Yeah. But I do what I have to do because I will not stand there and let nobody stand in my way between yeah. me and my God. No. Yeah. Yeah. People of God, too many times we see too many times we sit down and we have nothing to do. But this morning I'm saying to you, rise up, people of God. Rise up. They that wait upon the Lord, like the brother said, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like the eagle. They shall run and not be weary. Ask God to teach you how to wait upon you. Many times we don't want to wait. Many times we don't want to have those, um, we don't have patience to wait. But this morning I'm saying to you, if you lack patience, God, yes. help me to be able to wait upon you. Yes. Lord, I could not wait, but I just wanted to wait. My time has come. I need to wait upon you. I need to listen to you, Lord, because I know that the time will come when you will do what you have to do in my life. Yes. Everybody knew that Samson was anointed man of God. Separate unto the Lord, walking in the things of God, and a member of a church. However, he wanted to marry an unbeliever. Imagine, you are born again, and that is what is going on in the church. Many times, people of God, we are born again, child of God, and yet still we want to go out there and take our own seat to get married to. How can you equally yoke with unbeliever? How can you equally yoke when God said, do not equal you with unbeliever. When Samson told his father that, the father said to him, ask Samson, is there no woman in Israel you can marry? Samson replied, oh no, this is the girl I want. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> that asked Samson, is there any woman in Israel that you can marry to. Samson replied, oh no, this is the girl I want. <laughs> this is the girl you want. No problem, yes. That is the girl you want, go ahead my brother and have that woman. But when problem comes your way, please don't call me. Many times people, like I always say, I don't make my children choice for them. They know who they like, they bring that person for me, yes. I don't want to say, I don't want Tom. I don't want Harry. I don't want Dick for you. And you marry to Paul and you're going through your problem and you say, oh, it's because of my mother. No. You know what you want for yourself. But many times God is saying to us, I will make that decision for you. I will choose a wife for you. I will choose that wife, that husband for you. That you will continue to do my ministry. I will give you a wife of my own heart, not your own. I will give your wife after my own heart, not after your own heart. And many times, we disobey God. And when things start getting wrong, we blame God. Many times we need, please, we need not to blame God. But many times we need to blame ourselves. Because many times, people of God, we need to listen when God is talking to us. We need to listen Amen. and take heed. Let no man deceive you. Let nobody deceive you. They are strange women. And those strange women in the book of God, they are so, hmm, 
you won't believe them. They're not easy. And there's some strange woman in the church. Yeah. And when they come, they come to destroy the brothers and the sisters. Even the pastor. If the pastor don't put himself in, the, in, in, in God's shoes, they even drive him away. Praise him. How can you ever think of marrying a complete outsider when you know you are a, a believer separate unto God? It is dangerous to lie to yourself that the wrong thing you do are right. Many, things, many times the wrong thing we do, we think it's right, but it's not right. Think first. Pray about it. Many times I people say, oh, I pray to God for a wife. And look at what God gave me. And I believe if you pray to God for a wife, and you already pray, you said, Lord, give me a wife after your own husband. I always say, to that tomorrow my husband died, I want a man after God's own heart. If God giving me a husband again, it's a pastor of true believer, not a unsaved. Believers don't have to get married to no unsaved when your husband died. You have to marry to a believer. Don't go out there and take Satan. Because if you go out there to get ready to a unsaved, Satan is your father in law. Yeah. But if you say in God and you look for a believer, oh my God is my father in law. <laughs> so, people of God, be careful what we do in our life. Be careful where we go. The person, the better person we choose. I'm not being too harsh, but I need to explain that many times we make mistakes in life and we regret. But before we go and do something, think first, people of God. Sit and think. Don't do nothing for you to regret. Right? Who God bless, no man does. And if God bless you with a beautiful wife, a good-looking wife, and that is the wife God see that's fit for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> if in the church, you see many times I always say to people, if you don't find a husband in that church, I always have to those sisters in my country, go to that Sufra church. You don't find in that Sufra church, go to the Labri church. You don't find in the life in the Labri church, go to the Mankind church. Search the churches and look for a husband. <laughs> there are many husbands, many men. There is no man shortage. 